this episode is an episode that has a very special place in my heart because it was the first Thunderbirds episode I ever saw, Edge of Impact. And it also sees the return of the Hood as well, who you remember from Trapped in the Sky. Yeah, he's like an evil genius, but in this case, um, it doesn't seem like he's the big genius because he's got a boss in this one. Yeah, he's hired by this guy named General Braun, who's like this mysterious commander of a secret terrorist organisation. It's very vague and very mysterious. But essentially, he hires the Hood to sabotage the Red Arrow aircraft, this um, fleet of very sleek and very sophisticated weapons aircraft. If anyone is thinking of the Red Arrows, you know, the ones we got at the moment, I presume this was Jerry Anderson's idea that maybe in the future, you know, Britain would still rule maybe the skies, perhaps, and Red Arrow would become this all-new weapon. And sure enough, when the Hood sets his mind to sabotage something, he does it. He sabotages the uh, Red Arrow aircraft. In fact, one of them even crashes into the BT telecommunications <laughs> tower, trapping two men at the top, and as if that's bad enough, it's in the middle of this colossal storm that's rocking the tower from side to side. And we're not actually joking, it actually says British Telecom. It is the, the BT Tower! So in other words, BT still exists, you know, 100 years in the future, from mm. 1965. And the tower hasn't got any stronger, apparently. If we're still alive in 1965, we should check out and see if BT still exists. Yeah, in, if we go to there in 2065, look at the tower <laughs> and just be like, see if we can see the two men working up there. Imagine, we'll be in our 70s. But yeah, this tower is broken, and so international rescue has to take off, but herein lies the dilemma. This whole disaster happens while there is a visitor on the island, one of Jeff Tracy's old friends from the moon landing days, a colonel named Tim Casey. Yes, Tim Casey, which... Uh... I'm not sure if that was meant to be like a reference to someone, but maybe, uh, I'm pretty sure there was a guy who had a similar name who actually walked on the moon, whose name may have been also to me, Tim Casey, I don't really know that much. But this is a dilemma or sort of a problem that can only happen with a secretive organisation like International Rescue. Yeah, they have to find a way to keep Colonel Casey from seeing the Thunderbirds craft take off to rescue these people. And so Tintin comes up with the idea to take him scuba diving in a, what is a very funny recurring joke, where she's trying to take him to see this fictional underwater mammal called the Waterman that takes him into about 20 undersea caves. Or Now, international rescue missions usually take a few hours from start to finish, so I can only imagine the poor colonel being down there with Tintin, swimming around these caves. I mean, I wouldn't say no to going sea diving with Tintin, but, you know. You sick little... She's a lovely girl! <laughs> So anyway, back to the, uh, the, the, uh, the disaster, and you see some brand new machinery in this one. It's what looks like a mortar. Now you're wondering, what is a mortar doing in a rescue? Well, it's not firing weapons, it's actually firing equipment up to it. Yeah, that's how they managed to get the guys out of there. Obviously, it, the elevator shaft is out of commission, so there's no way for them to get up there. So they basically get this little mortar to fire some, essentially, jetpacks up through the window, and they get out just in the nick of time. So yeah, this is uh, one way of saving lives in the future. You don't really, if you can't get to them, you might as well just send up the equipment. Mm. So in this case, they've given them several jetpacks, which look like parachutes to begin with. And you're thinking, okay, they're going to dive off this, uh, off this, uh, off this tower. But no, actually, you just pull the pin and you fly away. Mm. Shh. And yeah, this time it's not international rescue that stops the hood at the end of the day either. <laughs> Lady Penelope doesn't come along and shoots him up again. It's actually a combination of the hood's own vanity and stupidity. Yeah, he's, because he's being promised uh, this gold. Gold. gold! gold! By General Braun. But what destroys him is not international rescue, it's, it's kind of a double bluff of his own inconsistency. That's right, he's being chased by the police after they figure out that he sabotaged the Red Arrow craft, and while he's escaping he comes across a roadblock. Now of course he thinks, oh they've, they've got the head and they're trying to stop me, and so he crashes through the roadblock, and what we see next is the police officer saying, Oh, well, we tried to warn him that the bridge was down, but he just kept on going. So, and sure enough, at the end of the line, the hood flies off the bridge, <laughs> straight into the river, getting his very much deserved comeuppance. I guess that's kind of like a, you know, a, a lesson for kids saying that, you know, no matter how vain you may be of things, it'll bring your own downfall. Mm -hmm. You may think you've got away with something, but uh, karma, mm -hmm. in a sense. And just remember, it's not always about you. Yes, <laughs> it is. But it's fantastic, I mean, the way it ends in such a comic way with General Braun uh, speaking to the Hood, 
And I was shouting at the hood whilst he's underwater, like, You fool! You have brought a water that my heart. Not only have you let the international rescue ruin my plans, but you have proved you cannot even drive a car! <laughs> it's a very fun episode, this episode. It's not so yeah. much a serious rescue. It, I mean, there's not even that many tense moments, but it's a very fun, light-hearted episode that really deals with just a lot of comic elements. The hood is quite a lot goofier in this. You know, working with General Braun and, of course, that ending. And even the Colonel Casey when he lands on the island. In fact, that's the thing. When he comes flying in on the ship, he didn't announce his arrival at all. And so the Tracys immediately think, oh, um, an unidentified ship coming towards our island. And then the missile chute opens and they all just hit the deck <laughs> expecting the worst. And then out comes a little sign saying, greetings, Jeff Tracy. And, of course, they're just taken completely aback by it and laugh at the whole situation. Another point is, is that uh, this is a very British problem, because you've got a red arrow flying into the BT Tower. Mm. Now, I guess this might have been Jerry Anderson's idea of thinking, hmm, what may kids be worried about these days? Well, we've got these brand new fighter jets, the red arrows and the tornadoes, things like that, because we might be going to war with Russia, and we've got these big towers, and they might be concerned about their, mum, their mums and dads who work at the top of these towers, so what happens if one of them goes into it, perhaps? Again, there's a tiny bit of 9-11 imagery in this, isn't there? I suppose so, yeah. But would kids really be worried? Like, when I was a kid, I was worried about what I was going to watch on TV. Not that, oh, oh BT Communications, oh, gee, <laughs> the red arrows. Oh. Or maybe just about, you know, buildings falling over, because in the last episode we had buildings falling down. True. You know? In this one we got a building falling down. So. And, of course, I think what's established here as well is the guys immediately tried to call International Rescue. Mm. So, apparently, after the whole incident in New York, word has got around about them, and now I guess they're a more well-known and established organisation. Hmm. So yes, it now feels that international rescue is something you can rely on if you feel like you're in a tight spot that can't, then you can't get yourself out of. Absolutely. But what if you're trapped in such a spot without a radio? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't you're pretty know. fucked then. <laughs> they crazy. It's probably a million to one chance. I just wonder if they ever do that. Maybe smoke signals. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Seen that from Tracy Island, you're just like... Or uh, even from space, you know, I mean, you'd have, to, you'd have to really set up a big fire if you want John to see it all the way up in Thunderbird 5. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but yeah, very fun episode. Um, doesn't take itself too seriously, which, you know, I like, because, you know, that shows that the show has a bit of balance. After all, it is a kid's programme, after all. It can't take itself too seriously. Yeah. It's just going to show we can be comedic as well as dramatic. Absolutely. It's kind of like a passion play. But yeah, and it was my first ever Thunderbirds episode and I was sold afterwards, you know. Kept on tuning in. And I just, uh, I just love that they use actual water for the rain, it really... Yeah, it ties the whole thing together, the whole... Att again, attention to detail, which is what Thunderbirds has really proven to be all about. So yeah, that's a very good episode, a very fun episode this week, so we really recommend checking this one out. Absolutely, and we will join you next time for the next episode. And see you later. FAB. FAB.